this is the Folksy Friend, and on this channel I like to talk about stories. In particular, folk tales, beliefs, and mythologies. Today I'm talking about a fairy tale. The story of Hans who made the princess laugh is all about the rewards of patience. This is a Norwegian tale that was recorded by Peter Christen as Bjorsen, and it's a pretty light one this time. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess who lived with her father. Now this princess, despite having everything she wanted, was always sad, and she never smiled. And not only that, but she was very proud and rejected any suitor her father brought to her. This attitude continued for many years, until finally the king told her, you must marry, it's time, no more stalling. And he announced that every Sunday, when he and his family left from church, they would wait on the church steps. Any young man who wanted to try his luck could come and try to make the princess laugh. However, if they failed, three strips of flesh would be cut from their back and the open wounds would be rubbed with salt. Many young men tried, of course. They all thought it must be easy. Make one girl laugh, get half the kingdom. Many tried and many failed. In fact, so many failed that the king started to feel pity for these young men and warn them against even trying their luck. Now, near to the castle, there lived a man who had three sons. He decided that despite the rash of failures, that his sons should go and give it a try. It was worth risking their backs to potentially get half the kingdom. So the eldest son went first. He was a soldier and thought that his striking imitation of his drill sergeant was funny enough to make her laugh. When he got to the castle, the king warned him that everyone else had failed and it probably wasn't a good idea, but he was convinced he could do it. So he went beneath the princess's window and began loudly marching back and forth, giving his best drill sergeant impersonation. She came to the window, saw him, did not laugh. And so the first brother had his back cut, wounds rubbed with salt, and went home. Then went the second brother. This one was a school teacher. He knew he had pretty good stage presence, and he decided he was going to make use of the fact that he had one leg shorter than the other. He could stand tall on one leg or short on the other. So he too went to the palace. The king said, I should tell you, with every failure, we cut the strips a little bit wider. You might not want to try. But he decided he did want to try. After all, how hard could it be to make one girl laugh? So he went under her window and began his best impersonations of the local deacons, the preachers, marching up and down, changing his heights, saying silly things with his impressions. And the king found it so funny, he doubled over in the doorway. The princess came and she looked and it seemed like she might smile, but at the last moment she turned somber again and walked away. And so the second brother had his back cut, salt rubbed in, and was sent home. Now the third brother came up all excited for his turn, and at this point the father said, no, you're not gonna try, there's, there's no point, this is impossible, this is an impossible task, I'm not risking you getting hurt too. But the youngest brother made an absolute nuisance of himself whining and complaining endlessly until finally the father had just had enough and said, fine, you want to try? You want to go get maimed? Go for it. The youngest son went to the castle, but instead of saying that he was there for the princess, he asked for a job. The guards told him to get lost. They didn't have a job for him, but he offered to fetch water for the kitchen. Said a castle this size, I'm sure the kitchen maid needs some help. Let me do that. I don't care if you pay me very little. And so, again, because he was making quite a nuisance of himself and not going away, they agreed. He began his new job fetching water, getting acquainted with people around the castle. And one day, when he went to fill his bucket, he found that the river had overflowed. And then when it went back to its normal state, a large fish had gotten trapped under the roots of a tree. So he took his bucket and he managed to catch this large fish. Happy with what he had done, he started to walk back, and on the road he met an old woman with a golden goose. He stopped her, 
complimented the goose, saying that it was a fine goose and that if someone had such a goose, then he wouldn't need to work all that hard. And the woman felt the same way about his fish. She said, you like my goose? I want your fish. Let's trade. And so they did. And once he had the goose, she told him, this is no ordinary goose. If someone is touching it, or you, when you're holding it, and you say the words, if you'll come along, then hang on, Whoever is touching will get stuck. And no matter what they do, they're not going to be able to pull themselves away. So Hans thanked her and on his way he went. After a short while, he came across another old woman. This one approached him and said that he had such a fine looking golden goose. She had never seen one so lovely. And she asked if she could pet it. And he told her, sure, go ahead. As she reached for the goose, he thought, I might as well see if this magic thing works. And when her fingers touched the feathers, he said, if you'll come along, then hang on. And immediately the old woman was stuck. No matter what she did, no matter how hard she pulled, she could not remove her hand from the goose. Hans started walking again, as if he did not have an old lady captive attached to his goose. And a little further down the road, they came across a man who happened to very much dislike the old woman. She had been mean to him in the past and it played some kind of trick. He saw her attached to this goose and thought that this would be a good time to try to get his revenge. So he ran up to kick the old woman. As his foot hit her leg, Han said, if you'll come along, hang on. And he was stuck. The man was forced to hop on one foot. He found that if he didn't hop along, he was going to be dragged. So the strange sight kept going down the road. They get closer to the castle, and then the blacksmith sees them. Now the blacksmith was known to not be the best guy. He was kind of rude, kind of arrogant, liked to make fun of people. Sure enough, as this very strange group came by, he started laughing and mocking, saying that it was a strange flock of geese indeed. Then his pride got the better of him, and he wanted to know if he could pull the flock apart. So with his great blacksmith tongs, he went and attached them to the back of the man's pants. Just as Hans said, if you'll come along, hang on. And he was stuck. No matter how hard he pulled with his great strong arms or dug his feet into the earth, the blacksmith could not let go. So Hans made his way onto Castle Grounds. A dog ran out, barking at this very bizarre sight which caught the attention of the princess. She came to her window and saw that all these people attached to a goose and started laughing and laughing. Hans was happy, but he wasn't satisfied with just that. He wanted her to laugh so hard she couldn't even stand. So he made a trip around the yard towards the kitchens. The cook happened to be stirring a big pot of oatmeal. She had a ladle in one hand and a porridge stick in the other. At the bizarre sight, she came out holding both and started to laugh, especially because she saw the blacksmith, the not so nice blacksmith was caught up in all of this. Then she caught a sight of the goose and she told Hans that it was so lovely. She asked if she could stroke it. That's when the blacksmith piped up and told her, you can stroke me instead. Kid's story. Furious, she rushed over and whacked him with her ladle, right as Han said, if you'll come along, hang on. And so the cook was stuck to the group, screeching and smacking the blacksmith with her porridge stick. That's not a euphemism, right? Hans led the group back around to the princess's window where she was still waiting, knowing they would come back. When she saw that the cook had been dragged into it and was making a ruckus, she just lost it. She laughed so hard that her knees collapsed and the king had to rush over and hold her up. He himself saw this sight, saw his daughter, and was overjoyed that someone had finally been able to make the princess laugh. And so they were married and the ceremony was so grand that it was heard of throughout the land. And that was Hans who made the princess laugh. This story is one of only many that are very similar across the world. In fact, it's so common that there is a category of folktales of 
poor young men who have to make a princess laugh in order to marry her. Interestingly, there's also a lot of stories that contain either geese or swans that make people stick to them. The human imagination is a fascinating thing. The moral of this story overall is that kindness prevails. The suitor isn't arrogant or presumptive. He doesn't think that he can just show up and make a woman he doesn't know laugh. He takes his time. And in the end, it's his kindness stopping to speak to the old woman and compliment her goose that gets him the tool that he needs to get his goal, to make her laugh. And even then, he's not satisfied just seeing her laugh a little. He wants her to laugh uncontrollably. So we know the princess got to marry someone who has a genuine interest in her happiness. When I was reading this story, I have to say that it reminded me of a folktale I know I've heard, but I just could not put my finger on it. So I'm curious, have you ever heard this story or a version that is like it? Let me know in the comment section. Leave me a like, maybe subscribe, and I will see you next week. Thank you.